teenager sighting. <laughs> He's hiding. <laughs> My sons have this thing that they do where they just walk around in shorts and a blanket wrapped around their shoulders and they have their like special soft blankets. They're so funny, they've always done that. And every morning they wake up and just all of them come out with their little, <laughs> little look like little Viking boys. It's really hard for me by about the middle of the week not to just come out here and show you everything that's going on in the garden because I'm gonna I'm about to shoot a garden tour. I find myself wanting to show you all the things that have changed, but I'm not going to do that really maybe a little bit not a lot so the carrots are down here and that's what I'm here for and you'll see they're kind of like laid over the peas started to die back and fall over on these carrots but also I'm not a hundred percent sure that some critter did not get in here uh, we pulled the peas out but just how much they're laid over seemed a little unusual these are cosmic purple carrots I sewed them really thick so there's some real, uh, oh, that's a good size one. The top broke off though. Get down in there and get it. There we go. Hmm. <laughs> I'm always so excited. Especially underground food. Such a mystery. <laughs> it's just like a little party every time I'm pulling out. So I actually have a purpose for these. And I haven't been rushing on harvesting them because it's been cool. It will get to a point that I need to go ahead and get them up because they'll start, they'll start bolting and they'll also their flavor will start getting really not great uh, whenever it's hot, but it's still been fairly cool. I think our temperatures are supposed to really start heating up. Okay. My hands got full. <laughs> that one's orange. I wonder if I got my seeds mixed up. Bear, back up bud. Do you want a carrot? You want one? You want a carrot? You want a carrot? interesting I thought you liked these since you dug up every carrot in the kids garden and ate it last year no okay taste change I actually pulled more than I need for what I'm doing because I just got a little carried away but that's okay These aren't huge yet. So do. I was down here earlier noticing that a lot of my cauliflowers were getting really pest damaged. And I decided to go ahead and start harvesting them. And I grabbed the biggest ones and took them in. And then when I decided what to do with them, I'm, I'm coming down and just grabbing the other small heads because you can even see that these have already got some damage on them. I'm gonna go in and soak these and uh, go ahead and throw these in my recipe. What do you think, Bear? Some cauliflower is better than no cauliflower, right? Bear agrees. So I already soaked the other heads that I picked in salt water to make sure that all the little sluggies and buggies were out. I'm gonna go soak these. Uh, I wish I had some peppers ready, but I don't. It's not that time of year here, so I'm just gonna do without them, and I'll probably throw some red pepper flakes in this recipe to uh, make it what I want it to be. I picked a beet and set it down somewhere. Where did I put that beet? Oh, there it is. It was just calling my name. I'm gonna run this through the juicer in the morning. But I figured I'd go ahead and pick it now. All right, garden grocery run. Bear, why is it that dogs find the smelliest thing and roll in it? Were you carrying my groceries? Where'd you go shopping at? <laughs> the place I where- think, I don't think this comes from the commissary. <laughs> Real food comes dirty. 
and sometimes has bugs in it. <laughs> I find it kind of hilarious that yesterday I was like, hey, I think this will be the last video that you guys see the kitchen. And then Jeremiah's like, no. And then today, here we are in the kitchen. Oh, well, what are you going to do, Bear? So, got my groceries, and this is what I'm doing. Slightly modified because I don't have any peppers. This would definitely be better with peppers, but I just don't have any. So, I'm going to go ahead and make it. And I could maybe get some from the store and throw them in later, but it will probably be okay. I got a lot of comments yesterday when I showed kind of briefly my cookbook collection. I was talking about Maya building a new shelf for my cookbooks in our kitchen remodel. And uh, I love cookbooks. It's one of my favorite things to collect. If I find one that doesn't really speak to me, like if it doesn't like make my heart sing I kind of just pass it on to somebody else and a lot of times like I'll read a cookbook and for some reason like somebody will come to mind or it'll just I, I just feel like that the author is really speaking the language of somebody that I know and care about and so I'll just give it to them and I keep the ones that have even if it just has a few recipes but really the ones that the language of it and the stories in it when they are very inspiring to me those are my favorite kinds of cookbooks we actually went to this restaurant Napolito that's the that's the Arkansas version right there Napolito <laughs> sometimes the stuff comes out and I'm like oh golly <laughs> so uh, we went to this restaurant in San Francisco a couple years ago whenever we went to Baker Creek's Heirloom Seed Expo the first time uh, Maya and I ate at this place and it was really really good but the thing that really stood out to me was they had these like quick pickled veggies that they served on the side of the plate and they were so so good and so much so that when I found out that the restaurant had this cookbook I ended up just throwing it on my wish list and my friend Jen sent it to me and um, I haven't made this yet because I really, really wanted to make it from my farm. Now, ideally, I would have some peppers that I could put in here. It's weird because for me, peppers are never going to be growing in my garden at the same time as cauliflower and carrots. For me, growing brassicas in the spring, this is the best brassica spring I've ever had because it's been so cool. And uh, I wanted to do something that wasn't just, I, I could easily roast like three of these small heads of cauliflower for dinner and my family could eat them for dinner. I wanted to do something a little bit like more special than that. Ah, uh, notice what time we are having. So I posted this on Instagram and I think some people's brain exploded. Uh, those are slugs right there climbing up the wall trying to get away uh, because this is salt water. If you pick anything from the garden and it has like places to hide, like a head of cauliflower, this is a uh, flame cauliflower. This purple is graffiti cauliflower. And uh, slugs have been really bad this year. Now for slugs, you can do beer traps. That's probably one of the most effective way to handle them. You can sprinkle a little bit of wood ash on your plants, I was told recently. I've not done that. Um, that's supposed to help with slugs. And then um, diatomaceous earth, but then if you're getting a lot of rain, don't put diatomaceous earth on your garden because it's a waste of your time because it just completely gets washed away in the rain and deactivated pretty much. But um, And also BT works for soft bodied things like slugs. Now I had done diatomaceous earth on these, which held off the pests for a little while. But uh, this last several days, we've gotten a lot of rain. They just kind of went crazy. And so I decided to go ahead and harvest everything while there was still something to save and just soaked them. I know this is like freaking some people out. There weren't that many bugs in this. I know like some bugs is more bugs than you really want in your food, but it's not in my food anymore. It came out of my food. Now my food has no bugs in it. My sink has bugs in it and I can wash them down the drain. So it's not that big a deal. Like this is real food. <laughs> Those are the ones I just pulled out. Here are the ones I just got out of the garden. I'm just going to set them down in there and run a little more water over them so they're submerged. There's probably like a quarter cup of salt in this sink full of warm water. Uh, not a ton. Nobody wants to eat slugs. I get it. I mean, I guess I can't speak for everybody. I don't want to eat slugs. And I've really not had any issues with soaking things. I was talking the other day about picking wild blackberries. I usually soak those. This is a hard thing to wrap your head around. If you have only ever experienced getting your food from a grocery store, 
where it is really pristine on the shelves and there are no insects and there's no damage and there are no spots and there are no holes. When you transition into gardening, there's a little bit of like rewiring the way you think and your expectations. I'm just being completely honest. I remember the first time we got eggs out of our, our yard from our chickens and they weirded me out a little bit. Like it was a little bit like, oh, are these okay to eat? Like, if, uh, really, like I went through that. I'd wanted it for so long and then I get these eggs and I'm like, uh, I don't know, guys. Like, they're, they, you know, they're, they're a little dirty and they didn't come from the store and they're warm because they've been outside and it was just all these things that were like, is this really okay? This only had one little sluggy in it. For the most part, it looks okay. I'm gonna leave it in there for a little while longer and then what I do is just rinse it off really, really good. But I don't think there was very much in these. Look at all these eggs over here. That's a lot of eggs. That's like just, I don't know, four or five days worth. But once you kind of wrap your head around the fact that it is okay for your food to come dirty and maybe with the occasional bug on it, you know, you take that off and you don't throw the food away, it's not ruined because it had a bug on it. You really, I mean, you just get over it. And the thing is, is that homegrown food genuinely does taste so much better that it's worth getting over the dirty process. I mean, you kind of fall in love with it. Now I do, whenever I'm like breaking up this cauliflower, I do keep an eye out uh, for little stowaways, but I'm not, I haven't found anything in this. Good saltwater soak usually does the trick as far as getting rid of stuff. And I'll do that. Uh, sometimes I'll do it if, if it's early in the season and I've got something like kale or whatever and I haven't seen a lot of bugs yet, I don't bother with the salt water because it's not really needed. There's usually nothing on there. But whenever it gets towards the point where you're really dealing with a lot of pest pressure and you're bringing in something that probably has insects on it, then, um, then I'll go ahead and do that soak just to be uh, sure. So this actually made more than I thought. So I'm going to save those, put them in the fridge. This is plenty. There's about three and a half cups or so of cauliflower florets. I get asked a lot if this makes the cauliflower taste salty and it absolutely does not make it taste salty. It's really, really tasty actually. Going into the grocery store and I mean, I still buy store produce. I'm not being like, oh, that store produce is so beneath me. But like there are times a year where I still buy a lot of store produce, but it is, uh, it is interesting when you really, really get used to gardening, organic gardening specifically, and you just get used to the fact that sometimes your food gets holes in it and sometimes you have to soak bugs out of it. And it's just, that's just part of it. Sometimes it is really weird to go in the grocery store and see so much uniform food that has zero damage or blemishes on it is really strange. Like, it's just like, hmm, what'd you put on that to make it so unappealing to the bugs? <laughs> Do I really want to eat it? <laughs> it really is. I, sometimes I'll, I'll look at all of it and be like, I know, I mean, just as a gardener, I know what was required to get that food to look that perfect. It's, it's definitely been sprayed with a lot of stuff whenever you got it perfect. And I've noticed that whenever you buy organic produce, it's usually not blemish free. Usually uh, you're gonna see, I've, I've opened a big uh, hunk of organic kale before from the grocery store and had a big grasshopper inside of it that was dead. Like I found bugs on store-bought organic food also. Uh, and I think that really, we would be better off if we would come to realize that we should not want to eat the food that's that's unappealing to the bugs. Uh, if the bugs don't want to eat it, then I don't want to eat it. And seeing bugs on your food is just a sign that like, okay, this is, it's real food. Now we want to, we want to keep them off. We want the harvest. We don't want to give them the harvest. I don't want bugs on my food, but the fact that it happens is encouraging to me. I'm eating something that's healthy and natural and good. My onions are still a little bit on the small side. These are just sweet onions and they'll get really, really big. Right now I'm just pulling them out as I need them to cook with. And once they get big enough that I need to get them out of the garden, I'll pull them all out and cure them and all that stuff. But as I've right now just pulling them when I need to use them. This actual recipe calls for one and a half cups of carrots, one and a half cups of jalapenos, which I don't have, one and a half cups of cauliflower florets, a quarter cup of onion thinly sliced, and then the stuff for the brine. 
and I'm kind of having to improvise like I said I don't have the jalapenos I'm probably gonna put a little more onions in this and then I've got some cucumbers uh, Benjamin actually harvested these out of the garden today and so I was gonna go ahead and just cut these up and throw them in there because quick pickled cucumbers would be good No, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to dehydrate it. It's called quick pickling, so you cook a brine and put it over it and put it in the fridge. I'm going to waste 2.0 gallons of water. Yeah, I'm going to waste 2.0 Weigh 2.0 better? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess you could say that. All right, now carrots. I don't usually peel my carrots. I usually just um, scrub them really good, snap the ends off the long stringy ends and then I'll just cut the very top off this and as long as you scrub them good they come good and clean that way you get to eat the whole thing if they were real big I might peel them if the if it had enough of a skin to get tough but when they're young like this the skin's super soft some people might argue that carrot skins are bitter and they don't like them so before you put a ton of carrots in something like this you could always just <laughs> taste them and see if that's the case but um, I don't, I don't find that to be the case. Can I have a little bit of the carrot and go give it to Newt? Oh, here, you give Newt this in. Okay. I just looked it up and found a blog that has this recipe listed. So I'll put a link to it down below. Um, and it's really, really good as is. But like I said, I mean, I'm kind of modifying it a little bit just with what I have. And you can totally do that. It's a quick pickle recipe. I mean, you can quick pickle like this most of your garden veggies and they'll be really good. And uh, so like I could throw some of those zucchinis I have in here. I'm not going to because I don't want to veer too much from the original that I love so much and I already put the cucumbers in. But you could totally do that. You could do this kind of thing with a brine like I'm going to make with a lot of things from your garden. Today Malia and I were out and what actually spurred this was um, I took her to go and get the first haircuts we've had in a hot minute and uh, we drove through a place that had these veggie wraps and one of them had pickled onions on it and Malia said I love pickled onions and I was like that's what I need to do with that cauliflower. It just jogged my memory and I remembered going and loving this at Napolito and um, the fact that I had this cookbook and I'm so happy that I remembered because this is gonna be awesome. Now is that a pretty bowl of veg or what? That's a lot of vegetables. It's looking good. Now I didn't measure any of this. I pretty much eyeballed it and kind of, you know, improvised and I think that it's gonna be really good. So let me go ahead and put this in jars and make the brine. Look who tried to swipe a dropped carrot. Did you not like it? You wanna try it? I really thought you liked carrots. Nope. All right. Hey Maya. I grew everything in these jars. I grew this. Are you so impressed? I am. I knew you would be. So I've got a half gallon and then two quart jars. So four quarts, got a gallon pickled veggies here. And my family will go through these. Malia and I will eat them a lot. I think Benjamin will probably eat them. Maybe Toby will because he really likes pickles. He's not a huge veggie eater, but he might eat them. But one of these jars I'm going to take to Cousin Amy because Cousin Amy is a fellow pickled veggie enthusiast. Like She loves pickles like I do. And so hers I'm going to make extra spicy because that's how Cousin Amy rolls. I do think that it's hilarious that I'm making a cooking video after I was like, you guys won't see my, my kitchen again until it's redone. The old kitchen just had to have one last hurrah. Cooked a lot of food in this kitchen. Just how it is, fluorescent lights and all. And it has served me well. But I'm really ready for my new kitchen. I'm very excited. <laughs> okay, so I gotta bring this to a boil. So this is boiling and I'm going to ladle it in. Now this has garlic in it and bay leaf so I want to make sure that each jar gets all the good stuff. 
All right, it's done, full of brine. It definitely took way more than the recipe said, actually. Uh, I think I probably could have packed this in a lot tighter and it would have taken as much brine, but at this point I'd already filled the jars and so I just ended up making a second batch of brine, which is fine. That is really pretty. And for so, whatever reason, this feels worthy of my cauliflowers <laughs> and my special thing. So I sowed the seeds for these cauliflowers on December 28th. I direct sowed the carrots in February. Uh, sowed the cucumbers about six to eight weeks ago or so. Those were the first few cucumbers we harvested. Put the onions uh, in from sets in mm, March or so, I think. Uh, so yeah, that's all food that grew in my garden. Pretty cool. So, um, I'm gonna let these cool off on the counter until, you know, they're not gonna heat up everything in the fridge. And then I'll move them over before I go to bed tonight into the fridge and they'll be ready to eat. After eight hours is typically what you wanna do for quick pickles. So tomorrow, they'll be ready to eat tomorrow. Um, very exciting. <laughs> I'm, Looking forward to this. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I will link that. Uh, I, I just found a random blog. I don't know the person, <laughs> but they're just gonna get some traffic today. So I'll link that down below. Uh, so you guys can go check it out if this is a recipe you wanna make. Uh, quick pickles like this. This is just a really good side. Kinda how I do stuff like this um, is, you know, if you're gonna have a sandwich for lunch, <coughs> If you're gonna have like a sandwich for lunch or you know, just like a whatever you're gonna have as a meal, I just eat a little bowl of this as the side, just kind of like a little side salad almost, just um, a pickled side dish to your meals and they're really good that way. Or you know, you can just stand at the refrigerator um, eating it out of the jar directly. I won't judge you, um, I really won't. So thanks again for hanging out with me. I bless you, until next time.